Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone and men that taught me this truth through the spirit. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that teach you this word of truth and sincerity. Peace and blessings to the rest of the house of Israel, the rest of the elect of the house of Israel that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Today's discourse or lesson is don't be the napkin nigger. Don't be the nigger with the napkin. Okay? And this is based off of, this is an exhortation, a motivation, a motivational video. Don't be the napkin nigger. And we're going to get into it because if you feel that this job is too much, if you ain't got time for this job or the time for this work, time for doing shows, time for loving your neighbor as yourself and being your brother's keeper, if you ain't got time, then guess what? The Lord will find somebody that has time. The Lord will find somebody that's ready, willing, and able to do this work, to fight this good fight, to lay their bricks down. It's that simple. You will be replaced. That simple. And then you know whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not. Your judgment is going to be far worse. Than what these people are going to get in the world. Alright. Now let's just get into it. Lord as well I'm going to get that scripture. This is Luke chapter 19 verse 12. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And that's talking about who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, which is named in the Hebrew is Yahweh our Lord and Savior, our Messiah. And he called 10 servants and delivered to them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. I got to cut off my damn thing. Um, I want to look up this word occupy. This is a GMS giving all praises to Yahweh by Shami Yahweh Shai. Today's topic is a continued way. It says occupy, reside or have one's place of business, a building, fill or preoccupy the mind or thoughts. When you spend a lot of your free time reading tea leaves, you occupy yourself with that pastime, meaning it takes up your time and keeps you busy. An army can invade another country and you occupy the territory. And this use of the word reflects the original Latin meaning, which was to seize. Now, the point I like was the meaning is to take up your time and keep you busy. So, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, which his Hebrew name is Yahweh, wants us to stay busy. Be busy doing this work all right we once spent a lot of time a lot of your free time reading tea leaves you occupy yourself with that pastime so we are supposed to be staying busy in this faith staying occupied in this faith whether that's through reading whether that's through shows whether that's congregating with brothers and the list goes on. Once again, if you're not on fire, you pray for the fire. And if you're not on fire, you find the brothers that's on fire through the spirit. So it says, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And that's two thirds of our people. That's the sluggards of our people. And we know the judgments that's going to happen to them because the scriptures say those that 
will not have me reign over them, bring them hither and slay before me. So there's going to be a great judgment for two thirds of our people. And when I say our people, I'm talking about you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians and Mexicans, the Israelites. Because those are not your identities, African American, West Indian. Those are the names that your conquerors gave you. The Heavenly Father gave you God-given names. All right? And y'all known as the Israelites. Read it on. And it came to pass that when he was returned, when Yahweh Shai returns, the second coming, having received the kingdom, because the kingdom of heaven is when he comes back to the planet earth and take out the rulers of this planet earth which is the wicked which is esau edom the caucasian man all right and the global the international bankers and the elites of the society once he comes back he's going to take them out of power and set us back up in power okay then he commanded these servants to be called on to him, to whom he have given the money. So right now, you got money in your pockets. You got a spiritual bank account, which is this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And the Lord wants you to go out there on the highways and byways and trade his money, all right, to his people. And now we know, according to prophecy, a remnant of his people is going to get this money. While the rest of the world is going to be broke. Which is the two thirds of our people. Or they're going to be broke. They're going to remain spiritually dead. Until the kingdom of heaven. So it says. That he might know. How much every man had gained by trading. So when the Lord comes back. He's making an account. Of how much work you put in. So. You. Have a choice. Get out of this truth. Because this is too much for you. Or handle your goddamn business. And get on fire. And start pushing this word out. This is a job. This is a labor. That's why the, the scriptures refer to this as the plow. All right. So you got to get to work, man. You got to get to work. Or be judged. And suffer, and suffer the harsh penalty of not doing this work. It's that, it's that cut cold and dry, man. Do the work, get rewarded, Lord's will. Or don't do the work and die. Read it on. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound that have gained ten pounds. So this man, this man did great works. Okay? He gave diligence to make his corner of election sure. And he traded the Lord's money. He did shows. He was out there on the highways and byways. And he was keeping the commandments to the best of his ability. And it says, and he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. So the Lord rewarded the man for his works. He paid the man. Because the Lord is a just power. All right. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound have gained five pounds. So this is another man that put in work. Did it according to the measurement that the Lord gave him. And guess what? And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. So even though he didn't do as much as the first man with 10 pounds, the Lord still rewarded him. For the work he did put in. Because he did all that he could do. And the Lord was going to reward. You brothers for all that you can do. But you got to give it your all. 
He's not going to reward the sluggard. And we're going to read that. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here's thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. And that's why the name of the show, don't be the napkin nigger. Or the napkin sluggard. The Lord gave you this power. He gave you this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He gave you this light. And you're not doing a damn thing with it. You're just going with the flow. You put on a garment. Whenever you go out to the highways and byways, you hardly reading with passion or with fire. You hardly speaking with passion, with fire. I'm not saying screaming it at the top of your lungs, but you just, you doing your best. You giving it your all. You sitting there at camp, you wondering what's going on at home. You at camp not focused. You at camp not pulling out precepts. And then when you're home, you're not doing, you know, you're not studying. You're not reading. You're not praying. You just going with the flow, man. So it says, for I fear thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up basically this knacking nigga who's just making up excuses. And this was his excuse. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest that. Who's that? Salak here, somebody was knocking on my door. So it says, For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest down, and reapest that thou, and reapest that thou didst not sow. Because, like the scripture say in Amos chapter 3, verse 7, surely the Lord power doeth nothing, but he refilleth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. A king does nothing but rule. Rule, cast judgment. It's his servants, the warriors, the soldiers. They do everything. The cooks. The king just sits back and rules. All right? So this man used the excuse that he feared him. He feared Yahweh Shah. And that's whatever excuse that sluggard niggas give. Oh, my woman. Oh, my kids. Oh, my parents. A thousand, a million and one excuses, man. Oh, I got to work. Oh, I ain't got no time. So since you have no time for the Lord, the Lord is going to move on. And find somebody else that has time for him. Since you ain't got no time to seek the Lord or be on fire. The Lord is going to find somebody that wants his fire. All right. So it says, and he said unto him, out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. So guess what? Since your mother, your father taking care of your parents, taking care of your kids or your woman, or even that bullshit job that you have that stresses you the fuck out, because that's more important than Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you're going to be judged for that. So thou wicked servant, thou knewest that I was an austere man, taken up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow, wherefore then gavest not thou my money, and to the bank, that at my coming, I might have required my own with usury. The Most High wants his money, man. The Most High wants his fetty. All right? The Most High is coming back to reap all the benefits from the work that the brothers put in. All right. And you playing with the most high money. You see what happens in the movies. You see, you hear, you hear the story about the mobsters and all the gangsters. You hear, <coughs> you hear the outcome of the people that try to uh, 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 um, shortcome the gangsters and the mobsters. So how much more? The king of terrors. 
how much more the one that controls life and death. So it says, and he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that have 10 pounds. So guess what? The man that was putting in work, that fire going to go to him now. That share is going to go to him now. That asset is going to go to him now. That fetty, that money, that little bit of knowledge or faith that the Lord gave you is going to go to him now. The man that's been putting in work. And they said unto him, Lord, he have 10 pounds. For I say unto you that every that unto every one which have shall be given. And from him that have not, even that he have shall be taken away from him. So the one that is the sluggard, the one that's the faithless, the one that's not putting in this work, they not utilizing what Yahweh Bashim Yahusha gave him, is gonna be taken from you and give it to the man that's having faith and doing the work and utilizing everything that Yahweh Bashim Yahusha has given him. But those my enemies which not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay before me. And that's what's going to happen to you sluggards and you faithless niggas, man. The ones that don't want to put in this work. That values their work, their, their, uh, their fleshly work, or their nine to five. Their, they value their kids. They value their parents or their loved ones more than Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. You're not valuing you. You're not valuing or prioritizing the one that gave you your wife and kids, that gave you your parents, that gave you the roof over your head, that gave you the clothes on your back, that gave you the food that you eat, eat that you eat every day. You think you're doing that of yourself? No, that's your how about Shem Yahushua. Because this is a light thing for make him to make a poor man rich and a rich man poor. It's a light thing to put somebody to death and for him to bring life into the earth. You think about that, man. All right. Um, the next one I wanted to get. Apostle, our favorite scripture. So it says, Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would... Thou work cold or hot. So the most high either wants you fully into this thing or fully out of this thing. You don't want no half stepping like Big Daddy King said. Shows you everything goes back to the scriptures. They got that from the scriptures, man. Ain't no half stepping, man. I know thy works that thou are neither cold nor hot. So you just in the middle. You in between. Going with the flows. You showing up just to show up, just to be seen of men, but not knowing that the most high eyes is 10,000 times brighter than the sun. And he has angels that's constantly watching you 24-7. So it says that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So the most I was going to spit your disgusting, sluggard, slothful ass out of his mouth, man. Because you ain't worth two shits that the most I uh, uh, gave you, man. You ain't worth two shits that your body is in. What's the point of you living? Don't you know we was all created for a reason? To fear the Most High and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And now that you know that, you ain't going to do nothing with it. Now that you have all of this precious knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you ain't going to do what the Lord commanded you to do. So you worthless, man. And every brother ain't going to be on the same level. You're going to have some brothers that can push out 
multiple shows in a day, in a week. You got brothers that can, you know, go into the history. Go in, you got to be, uh, uh, how, how does it say it go? You got to be well-rounded in all those topics. Prophecy, history, the laws, statutes, commandments, the ceremonial laws, the feast days. You got to be well-rounded in all those topics. But you're going to have brothers that's on small levels. They're going to do the three shows a week or maybe a little bit more. And you're going to have brothers that's going to be on high levels. They're going to be like a water fountain, man. But the thing is, you got to give it your all. You're not even trying, man. When it comes to the world, you're trying. But when it comes to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, what gave you everything that you have, you're not even trying, man. That's why he said, for it was our minds to go astray from the Lord. Now be in return, seek him ten times more. You got to give it your all, man. You got to pray. You got to pray. You have to pray. You got to believe that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is with you. Pretty much that's it. I pray and hope that you was edified. I want to give all praises, all honor and glory to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Till next time I say Shalom.